In this video, I'm going to try to repair this video doorbell. It belongs to my wife's grandmother and she uses it to open the door, the gate outside, as well as to look on the street. And it doesn't respond at all when you press, so it doesn't ring inside the house, but from inside the house, you can um, see outside through, through the camera. So it works in a one way direction. And uh, you can see from just looking at it that there is a lot of water damage in it. The unfortunate story behind this is that uh, a repair guy was called to come take a look at it and he condemned it to be totally uh, ruined, needing replacement. But when asked to put it back, just so that my wife's grandmother can always you know press the button and take a look outside since she's very old and disabled he said no it's it's ruined he can't put it back and it needs to be replaced now one thing i can't stand is injustice especially to those people that can't really uh, take care of themselves so my mission today is not just to put it back so she can see uh, outside through the one-way video but it's to actually repair this the first thing that comes to my mind when looking at uh, something like this, especially due to the fact that it doesn't ring inside, is to check the, the push switch. Now that is the first thing to do. I've opened it and inspected the capacitors. Whenever you have capacitors inside uh, something that claims to be water damaged, then you should just look at them. Generally, those capacitors always go very quickly and they swell up but this looks fine so with my multimeter now i'm going to put it to continuity you can hear the beep and i'm going to test to see if this push switch is working so with electronics you have to just go by elimination you go you start first at the first uh, okay that's those are the two pins that need to be yes those are the two pins that need to be uh, closed when you press the button so horizontally based on the video the video screen now and right now I'm, I'm doing it wrong now those two pins are what needs to be to make a sound when I press the button so the switch closes that that circuit so as I was saying you need to go by elimination. First, you start by the most probable cause. If you press the button and it's not uh, reacting, then first we need to make sure that button works before we go into the complicated um, PCB and other electronics to check if they are ruined or not. So it looks like, as you can see from this video, that this button is just not responding correctly to to that that close circuit when you push the button from outside so i'm going to now open that board and okay now i've done it i've removed the board and i'm just going to inspect it you can see from the rust on the pins of the lead light that this has serious water damage there is also a cable the brown cable you can see here that is literally held on by one one thread one string of cable and you can see how much water damage there is so what i'm going to have to do is to clean up and sew the back fresh um fresh heads on those cables back to those uh, those parts but the most important thing now is to make sure that the push switch is replaced here I have my folder which contains my electronic uh, small components and I happen to have a lot of small components that uh, span over the years since this is a hobby of mine and looks like I'm able to find uh, an exact replacement for this, this button in my tools bin. So you can see that it's exactly the same. So what I need to do now is just quickly test what direction the continuity should be 
and you can see that the continuity when you push the button is on the two pins on the short side. And this exactly is what was missing when I tested the pads themselves, the, the button on the PCB. I'm, when I mean PCB, I mean this green um, piece of uh, board on which the electronics are soldered on. So you can see that now testing that button, there is no reaction, and it means that the button is dead. So here comes a very long process since I was with just my bag of tools at my um, in-laws. I didn't really have um, my the right things I needed to, to get this done well, but with the soldering iron, I slowly got that uh, button lifted out. All I did was to make sure I heated the pins, the legs of the switch, hot enough to melt the solder that is holding the, bo the button itself onto the pad, and then I lifted up the pad. If I were to be at home, then I would simply just hold onto that, uh, that small board with my vise and then do this job much quicker. The same thing goes for putting back the switch on. Now I have all those holes fully plugged by uh, cold solder and I'm not going to waste your time to look at how long it took me. It took me over 20 minutes to get those legs back inside. So now it's done. I have soldered and cleaned up that um, water damage section. What I did was to cut off the cable head and get a new fresh uh, section of the isolation uh, um, material around the cable removed so that I have a clean and unrusted section to solder back to that board. So now I've put my multimeter to diode mode and I'm going to use it to see if those LED lights are still working and you can see there they are. Since a LED is a diode, once you use a diode mode, it's going to light up. And that means I don't need to remove those, uh, those LED bulbs. And these are the bulbs that illuminate at night to show the name of the person uh, you want to ring the bell to. So it looks like both LED lights are working now and I've soldered the cables back the way that I could. The button is soldered in place as well. So now I'm cleaning my solder job with the uh, isopropyl alcohol just to get rid of some of the, the rust and the flux that I used. Obviously the long-term goal for this, if we want to keep this uh, doorbell any longer, is to replace those lead bulbs and just get it cleaned up a little bit more. Okay, now I'm testing to see to make sure that the button itself reacts and closes the circuit when you push it, and yes, it does. So I've quickly um, put everything back together. My camera died, and I had to uh, get a new battery. So meanwhile, everything was put back together and installed in the wall again on the gate. And you can hear now that I can call. So when you hear, when I push the button and you hear that static. So let's, you can see the mechanism that keeps the gate locked is now closed. So I'm going to now try again, closing the gate. I'm going to ring. Hello. I'm going to wait for the door to be the gate to be open from the inside, and it can. So, just to take, give you a quick look inside, you can see that this is the camera that, and by pushing that button, we open the gate. So it means that all the wiring was was right. So this was a successful repair, with a very cheap repair indeed, because all I needed to uh, change was a push button.
it's so unfortunate that when you call someone to come and help you repair something very expensive process uh, those people when they see someone that can be taken advantage of they immediately start to see the dollar signs and uh, it's so unfortunate also the culture of throwing things away without trying to repair at least attempt to repair and totally condemn things to be replaced is something that we have to deal with now and this is the reason why I made this channel to show a little bit of a repair work and to show that it's possible to get things working again if you just want to put in some of the knowledge these days everything is on YouTube and uh, I've learned a lot from YouTube and I make almost nothing from these videos it takes me a lot of time to make but I'm trying to give back to people that may find uh, some use in these videos because I've learned a lot from from YouTube as well so thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video take care